All right, today we're going to be tearing into a 2000 Honda 1100. This is a VT, so it's a V-twin motor. Uh, we've got the front cylinder uh, cylinder head here. We've got the back cylinder cylinder head here. We've done several videos on this model already, so check those out on our channel. But right on this video, we're going to go ahead and just dismantle this motor, uh, go through every detail, all the way down, flywheel, stator, the clutches. We're going to tear this down into the crankcase and go through the transmission, look at common problems, what typically goes wrong, and what, what holds together well. So first thing you're going to want to do is grab an Allen wrench. There are several different ways you can do that. We've got uh, a, an Allen socket here, and then you've got a uh, style like this here that just an L Allen that uh, if they're really tight, I like to get a hold of those. Problem is with these is a lot of times these get rounded off and can round off the, the heads. It, that's true of any Allen, but it uh, seems like with the L wrench, you've got a little bit better grip on it. I take a hammer and a lot of times we'll just tap on it a little bit just to get it all the way in there. Uh, sometimes dirt and debris will hold those out. So a lot of Allen bolts. We've already pulled the uh, front left hand cover off here. And uh, these, we've already loosened up the front right hand here. These are just chrome covers. Check my other video. We've done a couple other videos on the cylinder head itself, which is why we've already halfway dismantled that one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these covers off here. And I'd like to mark these if I haven't already. That way just quicker going back together. And this what I would call the the rear right hand and I'm just going to mark that with an RR. I keep all these bolts together as well. They are kind of a specialty bolt, just a little bit harder to get. Uh, the other thing, pull these rubber caps off because if you don't, they're just kind of rubber. Uh, hold that, hold these away from the motor to keep them from rattling. If you don't pull those off now, they'll uh, for sure fall off at some point and you will end up searching all over otherwise your these covers are just gonna rattle so again two millimeter or two Allen's on this side same thing keep the bolts together that is the rear left hand gonna go ahead and right on that pull these rubber caps off here and keep these all together again so cylinder head uh, we've got handful of uh, nuts here that need pulled off and then we've got bolts that run all the way through this cylinder head um, so we'll go ahead and do that this time again we've already loosened up these these are uh, 14 millimeter bolts and if you see some here that look like caps they are you don't have to pull those to remove this head cover so keep that in mind And once you get it loosened up there, you can just lock on, just walk it off just like that. We've had a couple parts fall out. I want to show you those uh, in particular. They tend to uh, fall out like that when you just pull that head off. So they've got a the, these here, and then you've got a shim underneath. So you want to make sure you keep track of those and where those go. There's three on the rear, or uh, excuse me, on the front. Uh, then we'll look at the rear when we get there. Uh, what I like to do at this point is. Uh, pull our, uh, there's a cap here, it's a little hard to see, it's a 17 millimeter. What that allows us to do is be able to turn that motor over. Cap is off there, it's a chrome cover there, again 17 millimeter to pull that and then take a 17 millimeter uh, socket there and you can turn this motor over, turn it clockwise and there's an arrow on here. This is also how you find top dead center. Check our videos, we've done a video on finding top dead center on this model. I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, side cover off here. Again, more Allen bolts with fins, and these are kind of back in there a little ways, so just be careful you're not breaking these fins off. And then there's a bolt up top there. That allows us to open this, get underneath here to our, our spark plug a little bit better, uh, although we could have done that with that cover on there. So, I'm gonna go ahead now and pull this cam sprocket here, 10 millimeter up top. And then the reason why we put that wrench on there is so we can turn this 
All right, now we can remove this bolt as well. Now we're able just to pry that sprocket off of there. We're able to get that camshaft off of there now. And uh, you find the groove that that needs to go in. This chain here, I uh, want the tensioner is here. And so you gotta use a wrench to get in there. This will help us be able to pull that cam chain and that uh, cam shaft off. Then we have one up at the top as well. This will hold that cam chain. You can see there when I'm turning that, that it'll, that guide, it's attached to that guide there. Yeah, and they'll allow all kinds of free play when we have that removed. So able just to pull that up then, and there's your cam chain tensioner there. So. Like I said, you have two bolts, uh, one right in the side of the cylinder head, one right in the side of the cylinder. Those are attached to here, and that's gonna allow us to move that sprocket around there, get that chain off of there, get that camshaft out of there, so. Better way of doing that would be to uh, pull that, those tensioner bolts before you go ahead and remove that cam chain sprocket. Uh, just makes it a little more simple doing it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my cam chain sprocket bolts back on there. Just keep those together. All right, to remove this spark plug uh, housing here, I got a pair of pliers that are reverse and uh, just went ahead and uh, pulled those together, just started twisting that, that just un unscrewed out of there, just threaded in there. So. Not very tight, but it is sealed up with an O-ring. As soon as we do that, that cam chain is going to drop. Well, I hit that spark plug, I guess, and then drop. So keep that in mind if you're pulling that, uh, that if you, when you do pull that, that spark plug or that chain will just drop down. Got a cover on the other side there. Same thing, Allen bolt. All right, got that cover pulled off of there. Underneath of there, we got two 10 millimeter bolts. 10 millimeter bolts right here on the side cover here, just to uh, on the side of this head. And we should be loose and ready to come up there. All right, cylinder head is off there. So that's what it looks like there. Inspect that really well, make sure there's no issues there. We've got our head gasket here, pretty simple. Gasket, we're gonna pull our other guide out there. Our cylinder, let's see, we're gonna pull this pin out here. And then we can flip this around. Right in the middle of those cylinders is a coolant line. Coolant can run back and forth there. We're gonna pull both of those clips off there. All right, we're able just to push on that tube there a little bit more, push it in farther. So that's allowed us to slip that cylinder off. We'll inspect that. Uh, the cylinder walls really well. Um, go ahead and inspect that piston. Piston appears to be in really good condition, but We'll go ahead and double check that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that piston now at this point. I'll grab a pick here, get in behind there. Pull that circlip. I kind of keep my thumb over top of that so that uh, it doesn't go flying away, it doesn't drop down in that motor. If all we're doing is replacing top end, you wanna make really sure that that uh, clip doesn't fall down into that bottom end. Putting it back together then, I like to just take that circlip and just uh, push it back into the place there. And now we've got the front cylinder completely off. So crankshaft is down here. You can feel there, there's no free play in there. Uh, just, just looks really, really good.
Okay, we've got our back cylinder here. We've got a front cylinder, cylinder and head completely off. We're gonna pull our back cylinder cover here. I've loosened up the uh, head bolts here, some nuts that we've needed to loosen up there to pull this off just to kind of speed things up. And just lift up on here. You've got a waterway here, a water passage for your coolant. And sometimes that'll hold you up. That's a sealed uh, with an O-ring there. And then we've got our head cover off here. And there's your rockers down in there. Pull these here, typically these just fall out anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those. And then those will have um, shims, as you can see there, that will come out. Some of them will come out with those, some of them won't, so just be careful and watch for that. Uh, next thing you're gonna wanna do, two 10 millimeter bolts going into the, uh, the back of the cylinder head here and one in the cylinder, and that holds the uh, cam chain uh, guide and it's a uh, tensioner as well. So go ahead and pull those there and those that'll loosen this up. I, you're able just to pull that out just like that there. And that is for the king chain. And then your other side there will come out when we pull that head and that cylinder off. These, uh, there's I believe three, four Allens um, on the right side, the fin, the side cover here. Uh, we've loosened several of these up already just to speed things up, but we can go ahead and remove those now. They're kind of down in there. Sometimes if your socket isn't long enough, they're a little bit of a challenge to get to. So go ahead and pull that side off. We'll go the other side. Pull that one off there. Yeah, let's pull that sprocket off there. 10 millimeter bolts on the side here. Two of them. We'll pull one off, then what we gotta do is turn this motor over. Be careful that other cam chain is down in there. Um, you don't wanna use force on this one. It'll turn a little ways and then at some point that cam chain will bind in that bottom end there. Could it potentially break a piece of that case off if you're turning that uh, without holding that cam chain up. So just be careful of that. We just had to turn it a little ways so I wasn't too concerned about it, but if it would have stopped, you wouldn't wanna force it. So got that sprocket off of there, so that gives us a little more room to lift that cam shaft out of there. And that cam shaft is there. Inspect the lobes really well uh, before going back together. Go ahead and take this sprocket off here. We're just gonna let that drop. It actually drops down onto that uh, spark plug housing there. Then you can take these pliers again. These come in handy a couple different times on this uh, machine. So, oops. And then once you pull this out, it will, your cam chain will catch on that uh, spark plug and you can push it on past that spark plug, let it drop down in there because we are going all the way down into that bottom end. So if you weren't going that far down, definitely keep that cam chain held up there. Got two 10 millimeter bolts that'll be on the left hand side here right near the spark plug. And now that head's ready to come off. Sometimes, which is the case this time, that cylinder will come with it. Sometimes that cylinder will stop as you lift up. Um, if you want them separate, just be really careful again where you, where you force it. You don't want to break a fin off, and that is very easy to do. So just kind of break that free from the uh, that gasket will seal it up really well. Be careful pulling this off. It's got oil up in there. And uh, if you pull this off too quick, you'll dump oil all over the place. All right, we've got the cylinder head off there. Inspect valves really well. Inspect um, the cam guide areas there. We've got your other guide here. Set that aside. And then we're able just to pull that off. Slides right off of there. Again, inspect those walls really well. These gaskets you never want to reuse, so we'll go ahead and throw these away. This is what they consider your base gasket here. And 
and we'll take a pick and pull that silt or that piston off of there. Again, keeping your finger over top of there so it doesn't go flying across the room. And take and push that pin out just like that. And then we'll stick that in with that piston there. All right, we'll dig into your clutch assembly next. Or your clutch side here. Uh, go ahead and pull all these Allens off here around this cover here. What you'll see underneath this cover is your, your clutch. Now, if you're doing a lot of clutch work, you're going to have to tear into it more than just this cover with this. Uh, two, four, six, seven Allens on it. It's going to be, uh, you can pull your clutch disc out with this cover removed and uh, your clutch pack there, but you're not going to be able to pull a whole lot more out. So you have to remove these eight millimeter bolts all the way around there. This is an area that you'll need a gasket. Couple different areas on this cover that you can tap with a with a uh, plastic hammer. There, one of them's over here, kind of by the front cylinder. The other one's back over here by the dipstick. Just being really careful what you're tapping on over there. And then once you get in behind there, once you can get your fingers in behind there, you can pull that off fairly easily. All right, and we're able to pull it off just like that. Now you can see your entire clutch pack there. Um, your basket, you can see your cam chain, your timing marks here, got your pulser, your got water lines, oil pump down in here. So, all right, pull our clutch uh, discs off here. I'd like to go ahead and remove these. We'll go ahead and remove the springs and the bolts here. And then what we'll do is pull this top plate. And underneath here is a, here's your rod, your clutch release rod here that runs all the way through. And then we've got a nut on here. All right, we have got an inch and a 3 16th socket on here. And it is a 12 point socket. And I like to hold this hub so it doesn't turn. Go ahead and remove that. Now, going back together, Going back together, you'll see that there's a little ding in that nut there, and there's a, a groove on your actual um, shaft coming out here that uh, you'll ding right there, and that keeps that from spinning off. So I've got two washers on there, one thicker one, and we'll go ahead and just leave that washer on there. It looks a bit of a challenge to come off of there. Now what I like to do is... That is free, so I like to take and put this back on then. And I take these bolts here and springs, throw them back together. This just kind of keeps everything together as we pull this clutch apart. All right, now we've got everything tight there. Now we can pull our entire clutch pack assembly out all in one piece. We've got a washer on here, and then we can go ahead and uh, pull this clutch basket here. There's a spacer and a bearing in here. This grooved here, uh, or the spacer sits back underneath of this uh, oil uh, chain here. And so that kind of centers that chain. There's a little bit of pressure, a little bit of tension on that chain there, kind of holds it out. So that is what the, the tension is that I felt. That. We've got our cam chain for our rear cylinder that dropped down in here. I'm gonna take this out at this time so we don't spin this gear over and, and break a case. We've got our pulser here. That bolt we're able to just pull out there. We've got a couple gears in here. Uh, this is a, a spring-loaded gear. Sits on this one here. This one's got splines on it here. It's got your points there. So we'll go ahead and pull those off. This gear we're going to carefully remove there. Those springs are able to just to pull right out of there. So I'm actually going to set this gear back on this. 
What you can do to hold this together, this is splined back here. So to keep everything together, we might just run a bolt down through there to hold everything together. Now our rear cam chain can be removed off of there. We'll set that with the rear cam chain parts and we've got our pulsa here and we've got a line that runs all along here. So a handful of 10 millimeter bolts, a couple 12 millimeter bolts to remove that. There's a, ho there's a line holder is there. And then we've got one more a wire holder there. That's a 12 millimeter. That's also one of the crankcase bolts holding the cases together. So now we're able to pull that out. All right, we're going to pull our pulser out of there now. And then we've got our oil pump chain here. We can go ahead and remove that at this time. Well, let's see. We're gonna have to go ahead and pull that oil gear first. Water line here, can just pull out there. Or oil line, sorry, oil line there. Now we're just gonna pull all these 10 and 12 millimeter bolts they're gonna have to come out soon anyway. Oil pump gear here. You can hold that oil pump chain uh, it's best, otherwise that gear is just going to spin there. Then we can slide that oil pump sprocket off there and that other gear can go with it. There, that gear sits behind the clutch. We've got a spacer there that will keep with it. Kind of an unusual spacer, it's got grooves on both sides, so make sure that that stays in place where it needs to be there. Alright, we've got a shift star here. That one will be spring loaded. And our shift spring there, uh, spring rides on top of that shifter, sits like that. So it puts pressure on it down. You know what, I'm gonna actually pull all these crankcase bolts right now, just to get that done with here. Got 10 millimeters and 12 millimeters. All right, we're able to pull that star off there, get that bolt out of there, and then our shift uh, shaft there with our gear on the end of it uh, was able to kind of work itself out from there. So that is out at this point. I think actually we can get down to these oil pump bolts that we need to. All right, if you can see that there, we've got the, uh, we've got the shift shaft off here, we've got the shift star. And then I'm trying to, working on getting this oil pump out of here without splitting the case. So a couple questions on if that's possible or if you do have to split the case. So I just wanted to kind of answer a couple of those questions here. All right, we're able to scoot that. It's kind of a, a mount. It surrounds this oil pump relief valve here. We're able to remove that and this oil relief valve, I think, is going to come off as well. That oil relief valve came off. The way that we have this motor set up here, uh, just to show you guys what this all entails, we've got everything dropping right back down in the motor. The problem with doing it that way is uh, we're not going to be able to get to a, lot of the, a couple of those things that we dropped down in there. And I'll, and I'll show you what those parts are 
so that you guys just have an idea of uh, what you're getting yourself into if you want to remove that oil pump uh, without splitting this case. And uh, so, so the answer is yes, you can pull this oil pump uh, without splitting this case. And they've allowed uh, for you to be able to do that with an opening in the case here. I would not recommend um, tipping the motor up this direction to do that. And we've got our, our uh, screen here, our pickup screen here. We've got our oil pump here. And then I guess really the only thing, uh, we, we've got this uh, line here that comes off of that oil pump. It goes, uh, goes over top of that oil relief valve. And then we've got our relief valve here. Those just kind of work hand in hand there. So replace that oil pump, go back in with it, make sure your oil lines are on where they need to be. Shift star there with your shift shaft that runs down to the other side there. And uh, then go ahead and just start bolting things back together. Kind of do this video in reverse. Here we've got our stator side here. We've got our uh, gear shifter here. Uh, a couple of different covers we're gonna have to take off. Our rear output shaft here, water pump down here, along with a uh, oil filter uh, and oil sensor here. So I'm gonna start off by taking all these eight millimeter bolts off here. And that'll get to the starter drive and the stator. All right. That cover is off there, the starter drive cover. There is uh, typically a starter that runs through here. We've obviously, uh, somebody's already pulled these gears here that will, um, that will run, and they're idler gears that work with the starters. So starter coming out here, idler gear here, and you can see back behind here, we've got another smaller gear that we'll get to in just a second here. All right, we've got a handful of bolts here that we're gonna have to remove here before this cover is pulled. Eight millimeter bolt underneath of where that starter uh, drive system would be. We've got our clutch release. Uh, that's that rod that I showed you that ran all the way through there. This actually would run into this area here. And uh, there's, a, there's a ball in here that runs that, uh, that clutch release system there. All right, and we've got that cover, all the bolts off, ready to take this cover off here. There's a gasket in behind there. And keep in mind, this is uh, uh, your stator system, so it's a magnetic, uh, so there is some magnetic pull here. So if it's a little difficult to come out, that might be your problem. The other problem is we've got a shift shaft uh, down, down below here. And a lot of times those stick. All right, we've got this cover ready to come off here. Cover is off there. There's your stator assembly there. So that's where your spark, where your energy comes from on your motorcycle there. We've got our flywheel here. We've got our idler gear, one of our idler gears here. I'm gonna tip this up so you guys are able to see a little bit better. All right, we'll go ahead and pull this stator, the shift shaft here. Again, like I said, this water pump. We've got a boot covering our oil sensor. All right, we've got our sub harness here. That goes to our two sensors. Water pump here, two, uh, four 10 millimeter bolts. All right, your water pump cover is off there. If 
you can get them behind there. There's not a gasket. You can get into several different spots where you're not going to damage anything with a, a larger screwdriver there. What seals it is that O-ring there. So there's your water pump. It's off at this point. Our bevel gear there we'll work on next. A handful of 12 millimeter bolts. pull this and there is your output shaft there so we can dig into that more if you guys request that let me know in the comments below being careful if you do that there is a gear down here that stays in a spacer so I don't want that sliding all over the place the gear I think will stay there but the spacer needs to be uh, pulled out of there so we don't lose that. All right, we've got this Honda Shadow Motor ready for uh, the flywheel to be pulled, then we'll go ahead and split that case and get into that crankshaft and the transmission. So first thing you're gonna need is a 17 millimeter with a, uh, I would use an impact on here. It'd be very difficult to hold this flywheel from spinning as you're turning this. Second thing you need to know, this is reverse threaded. So you're gonna tighten this thing up uh, the opposite that you normally would, you're gonna loosen it up to the opposite that you normally would. So go ahead and turn that clockwise, which is uh, the right hand. Spin that bolt off of there. It's gonna, it's gonna be a specialty bolt, so make sure you go back in with the, with the correct one. I like to use thread lock. Um, some people don't. This is actually torqued down quite a ways. You probably wouldn't need thread lock. And the nice thing is with it reverse threaded, the way the engine spins, it tightens it instead of loosens it. So that's just something to uh, think about there. Uh, a lot of those that are spinning the other direction aren't that way. They are going to uh, loosen themselves. So you wanna make very sure that those are Loctited. Next thing you're gonna need, a flywheel puller. And I've got these in my store. Uh, link is below, uh, but you're gonna wanna use a uh, flywheel puller specific for this. Uh, model here and uh, then this particular one takes a 22 millimeter and you'll spin that in and take and I like to keep my hand on the flywheel itself um, just to keep it from turning and then go ahead and just just impact that in there it doesn't take much a lot of times these are held with a wood roof key so they are uh, not extremely tight but there is your flywheel there. There's your one-way gear there. So inspect that, make sure it works well. How you inspect that, you set it down there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cap here. Grab a pair of side dikes. This is just held in, and this is just pushed in. It's got an O-ring sealing that off. You can see there what we're catching on. We've got this shaft here that, uh, that we're catching on. It's not, allow it, not allowing us to pull this flywheel gear off. What you're gonna have to do with this shaft here, and um, I kind of wiggled it out of the bushing down here, and then was able to get it up as far as that I could. Pulled that cap off there, so I made sure that I was going up as far as I could. And if you take these off together, they will pull out just fine. So there's no other way to get this uh, flywheel gear off or the starter gear here uh, with this shift shaft the way that it sits there. So setting that, uh, the starter gear on top, on, on the back of the flywheel here, you can see that it'll spin one direction, won't spin the other. So you wanna inspect that, make sure that that uh, stator is, or that flywheel is in good working condition, and that one-way gear is working the way that it should. We've got our front cam chain that's ready to be pulled off now. and it can kind of bind up in there, but you pull it out the bottom there, and that is how you replace that cam chain. Now I've got a couple sensors I'm gonna pull off, and then we are going to split that case. So larger sensor here, this is an oil sensor, and then we've got a smaller sensor here. That's a 14 it looks like.
just a little sensor here and I pulled that the harness off that uh, goes to this a little while earlier in the video so you saw that looks like it takes a 15 16 That oil sensor is off there. Okay, we're gonna pull the bolts around the cover here, the crankcase bolts. They are a lot of 12 millimeters. All right, and that might be all of the bolts on this side. We're, we'll put a rubber mallet to it and see if there's anything else holding us up. If you still have your head gaskets on here, your base gaskets on here, this uh, this isn't gonna split apart. Those gas base gaskets are, um, hold these together fairly well. So you wanna make sure that those are off of there. All right, once you get all the crankcase bolts pulled around the outside, I would take a uh, plastic mallet or a rubber mallet, just tap on some of these, either one of these shafts here, and then you can do the same on the other side. I try to stay away from tapping on areas like this and this. Uh, it's tempting just because you can get a good angle at it. But the problem is if you tap on these too hard, this aluminum here, it could potentially break. Same thing with areas like this. If you grab a, even a small steel hammer and tap in these, uh, you could break these posts off. Um, so I like to use a, uh, a plastic mallet or a rubber mallet. Just tap on these shafts here. All right, once it starts coming apart, they just kind of keep on tapping. You're able to get your hands in behind there. Then I like to take and tip that motor up one direction to the other. Whoop, this one's just going to come apart. So whatever side of the gears you're kind of staying in, I like to keep that down and then just lift the other side of the case off of there. So there is the crankcase split there. Our shift drum just kind of fell out of place there. You can see how massive the crankshaft is. It is a very large crankshaft, so this uh, shaft can just be pulled, kind of all the forks right there will, will come off together. We've got our two gear sets there. I like to try to keep those together as much as possible. Um, if we don't, just takes a little bit of time going back together as the order. So we've got a, a washer here. That sat in behind this one. And then this gear went on to our output shaft there. You can see there, kind of a specialty gear there. So our crankshaft then, we can just tip this case up and uh, just tap on the, the crank on this side here and that crank will end up just dropping out of there. I don't like to drop it too far. There we go, so I just kind of wiggled it out of there in that crankcase. Or that crankshaft went out and came out in place there. So I'm gonna set this aside. One more thing I wanted to show you quick. I told you earlier I wanted to dig more into this output shaft, um, kind of explain it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this same video. Um, we've got your two uh, bevel gears here. This is the bevel gear, it meshes with this gear down here. Now, a lot of people wonder how you go about shimming this, what the process is there. You want a little bit of free play. So between these two gears, you want to be able to move it slightly. But if you've got too much play in there, um, you will, you'll wear this gear down or these gears down very, very quickly. So you want to make sure that those are uh, exactly where they need to be. They sell, Honda sells these shims in different sizes. So you pull this off. And that's just simply held together like this. And you got a couple bolts there that we removed. You've seen that, saw that in the other video. Um, and then in between those two pieces is this shim here. And you just set that on there. Again, these are different sizes. You wanna make sure you have the correct size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slip this on there. Obviously, tighten these down with bolts is gonna make it a little bit tighter. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of. So it's snug there. You can hear, and maybe you can't hear it in the video, but you can hear a little bit of free play in there. You wanna make sure you have that, but if you have an area where you can turn it you know, that far before it hits, you wanna take some of those shims out of there. If your shims are completely gone, you don't have any shims in there, 
uh, you need to replace that gear. Check my website for those gears. I've got uh, good used sets. I can get you new ones uh, if that's what you want. So same thing on this side. You've got um, a boot here, but you've got four Allen bolts around here, and you've got in this area here another shim that can be replaced with a smaller size or a larger size if need be. So that is a crankcase split on a 2000 Honda VT1100, the V-twin Honda motorcycle. This is a cruiser style motorcycle. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If there's some videos that I can do on this model while I have this torn apart and uh, getting ready to go back together, make sure you let me know those in the comments below. If it's been helpful, please uh, like and share like, share, and subscribe. There's a link below. There's a link below to our other uh, Honda videos, so make sure and check those out. Carb clean, valve adjustment, stuff like that. So make sure you check out those videos and the links below. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.